Hey y'all, come on in. Come on in. I know it's late. Well, might be late where some of y'all are, but it's 9:36, 9:37 now here in the Midwest. How's everybody doing? Hopefully all is well. Hopefully you guys are safe and dry. We have been receiving some really, really, really cold weather here in the Midwest. All through Nebraska, um, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Chicago. It's the snowstorm, ice storms. Ugh, really cold here. So hopefully everybody is having some good weather where you are, or at least you're safe and dry and warm wherever you are. But anyway, you guys, let me know how you guys are doing. Check in. Hit me up in the chat. Check in. Let me know who's watching. Because you know I can see y'all, but I don't know who out there. <laughs> hey, Miss Lady Scoop. <laughs> How you doing, sugar? And hey, everybody on Instagram who's watching me on Instagram. Y'all on YouTube, my Instagram handle is Tanya Primetime TV, all one word. And of course, y'all on Instagram, my YouTube is Tanya Knows No Limit and Tanya's primetime tv media reviews so make sure you follow me on both of those but um you guys what do you think about the last episode of atlanta housewives they in tokyo y'all they in tokyo and uh <laughs> i don't know what to say about this episode um i don't know nini was acting kind of strange this episode to me, um, hey Chastity, how you doing, boo? <laughs> Thanks for checking in tonight for the review. Um, the housewives, these housewives, okay. Um, first of all, first of all, uh, you know, of course, it was filmed, these shows be filmed months and months in advance, so we already know that Candy had, like, her dungeon, you know, her dungeon party, her, what does she call it, her variety party, dungeon party, burlesque show, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever she want to call it, but, you know, when they first started out the show, they was taking pictures, she was doing photo shoots, and that Candy, y'all, I... It don't seem like her body ever ages. <laughs> I was like, look at Candy with all these, you know, cute little sexy, you know, burlesque type of outfits on and everything. And she was working it. I, I have to say she is working that. And um, also uh, one thing I had um, got out of what she was saying, like when she was sitting around, you know, talking to uh, Eva. And, you know, telling her what she got planned for her, you know, dungeon party and all that. It was like, she said, Candy, what she said specifically, word for word, was scared money don't make no money. Scared money don't make no money. And that's what I like about Candy. I mean, she should be motivation for, you know, a lot of people because Candy, she be having her hand in all kinds of pots. I mean... For one thing, you guys remember when she had that issue with Portia, she had that issue with Phaedra, you know, about the, they trying to, you know, drug her and take advantage of her, you know, her and Todd, and everybody knew that wasn't real, like, we knew, we knew <laughs> that wasn't real. I mean, Candy and them ain't got to drug nobody, Candy and Todd, they didn't have three sons before, they do not got to drug nobody, you know, to get, you know, to have some fun. But anyway, she wanted to turn, you know, that negative into a positive, and that's how she came up with the dungeon. Like, okay, everybody knows she's a freak. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with a freak. Lady in the streets. <laughs> what they say? Freak in the sheets. <laughs> ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. That keeps your relationship, you know, spicy and always keeps your man guessing, you know. But anywho, anywho, um, about the dungeon event, you know, I think that was a really, really great idea for her as far as, you know, trying to turn that negative into a positive. But because... You know, I think that even if she hasn't mentioned it, I still think that 
crosses her mind a lot still. You know, with Portia and Phaedra and that big old, I mean, it was strong enough. You know, a situation for them to put Phaedra off the show. Because you know that's the real reason why Phaedra ain't on the show anymore, right? We all know that. <laughs> we all know that. But anyway, I thought that was kind of cool and everything. But when she was speaking with Eva, y'all. And Eva, okay. I don't know how Candy, um, why she would say that. But she was like, she's not really good at expressing herself. You know, sometimes in words. And Eva was like, me too. Girl, me too. And I'm like, Eva, are you serious? Like, real spit. Real spit. <laughs> Eva ain't never had any problems at all expressing herself on this show. Um, if anything, if anything, she has a problem, you know, remembering what it was that she had expressed. Like, you know, portion of others keep telling her, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Eva, really? You don't know how to express yourself? You drawing shade left and right behind everybody's back. <laughs> but yeah, she still thinks about it. I think she does. And that's, mm, I mean, probably, probably part, part of the reason why she still treats Portia like she does. Like, I don't know, maybe four or five episodes ago, her and Portia, they had sat down, you know, after Candy was like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to tell you anything else about your man since you don't want to hear nothing about your man. And we're just going to squash it. At that time, they was like, we're going to try to move right along. We're going to try to, you know, become friends. They had said before they was going to try to be, fr be friends and rebuild their relationship. But all through this season, I cannot tell. I think Candy is still holding that in the back of her mind like, this heifer said I was going to drug her and rape her and molest her, you know, <laughs> her and Ty. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, they don't need, they don't need no drugs um, to, uh, you know, have their little threesomes or their little dungeon parties. <laughs> but um, Portia was like, okay, when Portia was at Nene's house, well, no, actually, Nene had came to Portia's house. And Portia was like, I don't know. I thought Portia looked okay. Did her face look, didn't look beat to y'all? Like, I thought her face looked beat. But she was telling Nene, um, I slept in my makeup. I ain't been washing my face. And Nene was like, why ain't you been washing your face? And she claims that the baby is like wearing her out to death. But I think Portia was dragging it. Like, really, I think she was dragging it. Because her face, she talking about the baby beating her, wearing her out to death. Her face looked beat to death. I didn't see no uh, makeup smudges on her face. I didn't see no eyeliner all under her eyes. Them fake lashes wasn't stuck to the top of her eyelids. <laughs> so I think she was kind of dragging it out. But Nene had me cracking up. She was like, uh, what'd she say? She said, um, if, she's, if, if the baby wearing her out so bad right now that she ain't washing her face, just wait till she like, you know, a few more months along. That girl ain't going to be trying to wash her tail. <laughs> she ain't going to be trying to wash her tail. I mean, I'm like, okay, you know, you three months, you, you almost through your first trimester, almost. So I, I don't think it's the baby that's wearing her out. I think it's probably a lot of other stuff that she might be involved in. But anywho, anywho, um, what do y'all think about uh, Marlo? Like when they was on a trip and they had first got to Tokyo, Marlo, well, first of all, I, I guess I feel really bad because, you know, basically the same thing that happened to Tony B happened to Marlo. And I'm starting to wonder if it probably was the same people, like, all her luggages was stolen. All of it. Tony Braxton, her luggages was stolen. Um, hmm. I wonder if people's like really clocking these celebrities on these reality shows and you know pinpointing where they at, where they're gonna be. They took all her luggages, and Marlo was pissed, as she should be, as she should be. But when she was um the next day. When the ladies was asking her, you know, how she's doing and all that, she came out late. They didn't offer her 
they didn't offer to check on her. She was pissed. I guess I would have been too. I guess I would have been too. Because they knew she didn't have no luggage. Basically, all she had was her carry on her purse. She didn't have no clothes. She didn't have... <laughs> Remember when they was playing with her wig? <laughs> she was mad. She was like, look, don't touch. Look, don't touch. She didn't have no glue to lay that wig down. She didn't have no wig brushes, no deodorant, no clean bras, no drawers. She didn't have nothing. They all got to their hotels, you know, sorted their clothes out, probably put their clothes up, you know. And granted, they ain't all the same size. They're not all the same size, but I'm sure she could have got away with wearing somebody's stuff, or at least using somebody's stuff. Somebody give her some deodorant, a brush, a, 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 I don't know. I don't know, but she was hot. I was like, <laughs> that was wrong. That was wrong. But then on the flip side, on the flip side, me, like I want to say maybe two years ago, because we go on vacation every year. Like the same clique, me, my sons, you know, our relatives, cousins, the same clique. We all toss up some ideas every year and, you know, whoever gets the most votes, that's where we go. And a few years ago, I had uh, got everything ready, everything packed, me and the boys, and our family had came over at like 2, 3 in the morning to pick us up. I told the boys, get everything, get all the luggages, grab everything, put it in the trunk. So we can go. Me, I'm thinking they got everything. <laughs> I'm thinking they got everything. When we hit down, when we touched down in Texas, because we had went to San Antonio that year to visit another relative, we got there and I realized my suitcases was not in the car. Like, how did they forget my suitcases? I had like my little suitcase with all my hair stuff, all my makeup, you know, stuff like that. But my clothes, my shoes, Everything was at the crib. What I do, <laughs> I certainly didn't ask nobody for no uh toothbrushes, no toothpaste, no draws, no bras, no hair glue, none of that. I took my butt to Target. Target and I think I even a dollar store, the Dollar Tree, Family Dollar, something like that, something like that, and bought some cheap outfits. <laughs> some underclothes, some flip flops. <laughs> you got, you just gotta make do. She talking about she gonna use Candy's credit card to buy her some clothes. Candy was like, "Bitch, no, you ain't. <laughs> you ain't using my CC, not my credit card." <laughs> but that's what she should have done. I mean, I know they in Tokyo. I don't know if they got a dollar store or a Target. I, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm sure they got somewhere reasonable where you can just buy something to just just wear for a few days. Just wear for a few days. But anyway, I was like, poor Marlo. I understand. I, I was there. I, I, I get it. <laughs> I get it. But then as far as like um, the tattoos, when they was on the bus, <laughs> Marlo was bad, Chastity. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that right now. <laughs> like, when they got on the bus, Marlo had her shades on, and she was sitting there, like, everybody was kicking and laughing, and Marlo was like, kept adjusting her shades, like, and then when they was playing with her hair, she was like, look, don't touch, look, don't pull her hair down. <laughs> she was heated. She was heated, but you know what had me cracking up? When they was on the bus, and, okay, Cynthia, she was like, I'm thinking of getting another tattoo. You know, why I'm here in Tokyo, you know, I think I'm going to get another tattoo. And do y'all think Portia was being a little shady, like in a subtle type of way? Um, Portia, <laughs> Portia was like, Cynthia, you know how Portia be all giddy. She was like, Cynthia, I think you should get some actor tattoos with Chris. And everybody was looking like, who the hell? Cynthia was like, who and who the hell is Chris? <laughs> I'm like, you know that man's name. You know that man's name. I was hollering. <laughs> I was like hollering like Portia. Yeah, she was being shady in a little subtle way. I'm like, his name is Mike Hill. And then he repeated it several times for the lady. He's like, I'm Mike Hill, not Will. Hill, not will. 
get it together, Portia. And I'm like, okay, if he's watching this show, don't let him watch the recap. <laughs> don't let him watch the recap because he's going to be like, who the hell is Chris? Sin, who the hell is Chris? But anyway, anyway, Chris, Mike, that, that, that don't even sound nothing like. So I don't know how she uh how she confused his name, but that was funny. But um, one thing about it, Portia, now, Candy was teasing her. You know, she was talking off camera in the green room. And she was like, Portia, she might sometimes act, you know, dumb. She might sometimes act a little confused. But Portia's really smart. I mean, smart enough to not put Dennis's name on her body parts. I mean, Dennis got like, what, two, three, four, five, eleven, you know, female names already on his body. So, I don't know. Maybe that's why she only got uh, behind her ear. I think she said it was a heart or I don't know what else she said was behind her ear. But <laughs> Eva was like, oh, okay, you got the emoji tattoos. <laughs> Cause she had like some hearts and she, I think she had some money and dollar signs. I don't know. She had something behind her ear. But anyway, and then it's behind her ear like hidden. Like, hmm. I wonder if there was a purpose for that. Why it's hidden behind her ear. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all tell me what y'all think. <laughs> y'all tell me what y'all think. But um, what else was funny? Oh, oh. Uh, when they got to, okay, when they got to eat. Okay, the first time they got there <laughs> and they sat down to eat, Candy was looking at the meal like, hey, Ken Ken, how you doing? <laughs> we just talked about uh, these housewives of Atlanta. Well, okay, some of them are housewives, some of them are girlfriends, some of them are single, but it's still called Housewives of Atlanta. Go figure. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, when they had got to the restaurant, it was called Metropolitan Grill. Metropolitan Grill. I was looking at those meals like, okay, what exactly was it that they grilled that was on that plate? Um, Everything on that plate looked raw. And Candy spoke up. Like, we all know Candy. She is not embarrassed when it comes time to eat. Candy will stack her plate up like the um, relatives who come to your barbecue and they don't bring nothing but they appetite and some empty containers to take home after they leave. Candy is not ashamed to eat and she loves to eat a lot. <laughs> she was like, as soon as we leave out of here, y'all better take me somewhere to get some food, some real food, real fast. <laughs> Candy was mad. Everybody was mad on this trip. Like, okay, Eva was mad. Well, okay, Eva, before before it got towards the end, you know, Eva was mad already. And it was mainly because of what? Portia? Because <laughs> she thought Portia, I thought you were my friend. But when we were, you know, at the Hibachi, you know, party, you try to like throw me under the bus or make it seem like, like I said, Eva, she always forgets her shade. She always forgets her shade. You throw out the most shade about everybody, but then you be like, huh? What did I say? I swear, I don't have a shady bone in my body. <laughs> Ain't that what she said last episode? <laughs> I don't have a shady bone in my body. I was like, girl, bye. <laughs> girl, bye. But um, <laughs> as far as like, okay, as far as like their cultures and everything, I never knew. I mean, I don't know too much about Tokyo. If y'all know a little bit about Tokyo, besides, you know, Japanese menu or you know them little cloths they have on their feet and that little little thing on their head. I did not know that it was really disrespectful um for you to be late or for you not to be punctual. Um it's disrespectful to not take other people's time and consideration. I mean, you would think it's disrespectful because I think it's disrespectful. If I say we going out at nine and I'm sitting here with my face beat and my clothes on and my wig snacks and you don't get there to 1030, I mean, that is disrespectful, but they take it to a whole nother level over there. It's like, 
Uh uh, that girl, that that lady there, there. What what the heck she called? Kanashi. I don't know what the hell she called. But anyway, tour guide, tour guide. She was pissed, but I guess she was still trying to be like courteous and. She kept saying, come on, come on, like they was little kids. Come on, come on. We got to go. Get on bus. Get on bus. I'm <laughs> they was like, no, we can't leave. We can't leave. <laughs> I thought that little lady was going to walk off and leave them sitting right there on that bus. Like, she seemed like she was hot. Like, okay, I tell you 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. What, what, where they at? They always late. Always late. But Marlo, I get it. She she was she didn't have her luggages. The rest of them, uh, Nene, I, I don't know, I don't know. Nene, she had an issue. It seemed like as soon as she got there, like yeah, they left me. <laughs> they did. I'm like, but I mean, can you get mad? Like, how many trips have they been on? And somebody, somebody, and it's usually candy. Actually, it used to be Candy all the time, who was always late. Or was that Phaedra? No, I think Candy was the one that was always on time, and Phaedra was always late. One of the two. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, I think that's really rude. Really rude. Tokyo, the U.S., Hawaii. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I like punctual people. But, anyway, um, as far as disrespectful, like, how do y'all feel about what Eva was saying about Portia? Um, I think I had hit on it a little while ago, but she told Portia after the hibachi party, you know, the last episode and how she had brought up the fact that she was, um, being shady to Cynthia, calling her the mother of, you know, the mother, <laughs> basically telling her she ain't got it like that anymore, even though, even though she did beat her, you know, on they, when they did their little runway and everything with their little modeling and all that, Cynthia still got it <laughs> head to toe. She still got it. But um, because Portia had brought that up, she was upset, like really upset. But I think she didn't get Biggie bad until after she talked to Candy. Remember at the beginning of the, can of the episode, Candy was like, okay, if somebody, basically, if somebody says something to you and you don't like it, you need to nip that in the bud right then. Don't sleep on it. Say what you got to say and move on. So I guess she has like some encouragement. You know, Candy, she she does. She speaks what, what she want to say, what's on her mind. Candy don't hold her tongue for nobody. Um, So I, I guess that's maybe why she came to Portia like that. But Portia was like, really? I'm assassinating your character? Like, you the shadiest one of the group, but I'm assassinating your character? <laughs> I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> First of all, let's see. Um, Okay. Portia has said it. Candy has said it. Nene has said it. Cynthia has said it. And what they had said was, Eva, you is super shady. And you always, like, they didn't individually told her. You always said some shady shit behind somebody's back. And then you forget all about the shade. You just forget. <laughs> she is real shady, Chastity. <laughs> And I think Candy, yep, I think Candy gave her that push that she needed because Eva, she wouldn't have said nothing. And then on top of that, she said it to Portia. Like, out of all the people in the group, I think Portia by far is probably the weakest link. And I don't mean that negatively. I just think Portia really don't like confrontation. So not that she can't get bout it, bout it, you know, you know, be on that rah rah, but I think she just out of the out of the most of them, she doesn't like confrontation, except for Tanya. But we gonna get on her next. Tanya, her name is Tanya. My name is Tanya. <clears throat> Two totally different people, entities. Um, the way she was letting Nene. Okay, Lord have mercy. <sighs> okay. 
I still don't get it. Like, why did Nene bring this lady, Tanya, who seems like a really, really sweet, nice person, beautiful lady, brought her, introduced her to the cast, brought her to, you know, the TV show, the network, and has been shading her and being mean to her, like, ever since the first episode. I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> you said I'm just now seeing that I don't have a profile picture that's creepy. You just made me laugh when you said two different times. <laughs> because, because <laughs> everybody thinks because my name is T-A-N-Y-A that is spelled Tanya. Nope. <laughs> it's spelled like T-O-N-Y-A, like, you know, the, like it's normally spelled Tanya. But, you know, I don't get mad at people though when they say Tanya. I just be like, it's Tanya. It's okay, though. <laughs> it's okay, though. But she been treating her so mean. I'm like, ugh. But anyway. 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 Um, Ethan's always forgetting her shade. She is always forgetting her shade. Did y'all see Portia? I mean, did y'all see Candy? Okay, let me see if I can do it right. I be trying to do people's facial um, expressions. This was Candy. Okay, this was Candy when Eva was trying to go off on Portia and trying to accuse her of assassinating her character. Candy was like this. <laughs> Candy be killing me. She be having her lips twisted up like, girl, and then she have her eyebrows. I can't really do the eyebrows where she be having one up and one down, but I'm like, Lord Jesus, Candy and her facial expressions be killing me. She was sitting there like she wanted to say something, but I'm just going to twist my lip and look at you sideways like I'm going to give you the side eye because you own one. <laughs> you own <own> one. <laughs> but um, I thought that was kind of cute how... Uh, Portia decided to tell the ladies that she was pregnant. Like, I thought that was kind of cute, you know, kind of creative. Um, she was like, I'm going to tell them in Japanese. I would have never guessed what she was trying to say. The ladies had no clue what she was trying to say. But after they heard the news, as you know, I, I just knew, everybody knew, I'm sure y'all knew too, they was going to be happy. They was ecstatic. Um, but, like some of them were saying, I think they really knew already. <laughs> you said that loud noise. <laughs> you talking about when, um, when, um, when Nene came in, when she was beating on that, uh, I don't even know what you call that thing, but that thing was loud. Nene came in there like, bang, bang, bang. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But she got the attention. <laughs> she got the attention. <laughs> but I thought that was kind of clever, you know, but everybody was happy. And <laughs> Marla was probably still pissed though, because she ain't had nair clothes, like nair clothes, not a slip, not a slipper, not a sock. <laughs> Hey, Miss Hog, how you doing? <laughs> How's you doing? How you doing? <laughs> but um, yeah, they was they was happy, they was excited. But um, again, I think the ladies knew that Portia was pregnant. Like she was getting, you know, a little pouchy around the middle. And Portia, you know, she got a cute little shade down, bing, bang, bang, bam, you know. <clears throat> but you know, in her face and her cheeks. And her breasts, I mean, her breasts are like, they already big. But, oh, my God, her breasts look like they didn't already grew like 10 times bigger. Um, you know, so they knew and then her saying she's uh, uh, basically doing a cleansing, like a self-cleansing and no alcohol. Like, out of all the ladies in the group, who you would think would give up alcohol besides Candy? Because Candy don't drink. So, besides her, who would you think would give up alcohol? A self-cleansing, but you eating up everything else under the sun? <laughs> so, yeah, they knew they knew that she was, girl, they was probably just waiting on it. Like, okay, we're not going to pressure her. We're not going to 
hound her and you know is you pregnant is you pregnant but you know they found out they was happy and it was all good so but yeah that banging noise marlo was sitting there like <laughs> but oh well oh well but you know um when eva's mom like they had went to commercial and then like right after that eva was on the phone and her mom, you know, you, you could hear like her, you know, I think she had her on speakerphone or maybe Eva's mic was real close to the phone, but you can hear her mom. And that was like so heartbreaking. Like you over there in Tokyo trying to enjoy yourself, um, have a great time without killing each other over there. And then your mom calls and tells you that your grandpa, you know, had a heart attack. And probably only got moments left to live. So, you know, that was really heartbreaking, you know, seeing her, you know, get down like that. That's really sad. But, yeah, he's on life support. I don't know um, if now, you know, as of today, I'm not going to assume that he's passed because if I haven't read anything, so... I don't know. I'm just, you know, everybody keep her in your prayers like I always do. You know, whenever these celebrities that we love to watch are going through stuff, I always say keep them in prayers, you know, even though you really don't know them personally. It's always nice to pray for someone. But yeah, um, Candy, though, like when she was talking to Candy, like I, me and Candy is kind of like on that level when she was talking about, you know, um, I'm kind of, you know, numb to death. Like, I'm, I think I'm kind of becoming numb to death as well. Like, Candy was saying, like, so many people have died around me. You know, my mom, rest in peace. Uh, my grandma, my grandpa, aunties and uncles, cousins. I mean, a lot of people have passed around me. So, I'm like, Candy, sometimes, you know, I, I'm sure some of y'all might be like that way, too. Where, when you hear bad news... It's like, especially if you're like me, I'm like a real caring, loving person. But sometimes it's like, okay, this is really devastating. Why aren't I crying? Like, I feel real bad, but why aren't I crying? And Candy was like, you know, I'm really numb to death, you know, after so much. But, <laughs> but if I see you crying, if I hear you crying, I don't care if you're on TV <laughs> or in front of me, I'm just going to be like, balling like like a big old baby just balling but you know sometimes it's kind of hard or i find it unable find myself unable to cry you know at the drop of a dime even if i feel really bad for someone but so i get where candy's coming from but um miss hall you said you're right we haven't heard any updates regarding eva's grandpa on social media right and like i said these shows you know they usually are filmed sometimes like six eight nine ten months you know ahead of time so i haven't heard anything so i'm not gonna say rest in peace or nothing like that you know i'm just keep her in her prayers but did y'all think that was kind of weird like okay speaking of eva's grandpa um did y'all find that kind of weird like when they went to uh when they went to pull out the fortune the fortune papers or it was like a wall and it had all these boxes and you pull out pieces of paper and then you read your fortune. Like, I just thought that was really crazy. Like, okay. Um, what was Portia's? <laughs> Every single one of them had a great message. Like Candy's hers was like, um, your family business will be prosperous. Um, your face, everybody's going to know your face. Everybody's going to know your business. You know, they said even like, uh, the capital, you know, well, no, uh, Porsche's said something like when the spring comes, you know, willows are going to be in the bed. Uh, flowers are going to broom, bloom. I said broom, <laughs> bloom and something happy, you know, will come to be. Eva's said, the patient will either be well or get well. Um, her marriage and her career is going to be well. And I'm like, why did all their fortunes seem to align with what was really going on in their life? Didn't y'all think that was kind of crazy? Like, <laughs> like, okay, how many times have y'all went to eat Chinese, Japanese, whatever, and you got your little fortune cookie? 
sometimes I throw them away because I'm like, all oh, them things, they don't never, you know. And sometimes I read them. But <laughs> I ain't never had no fortune cookie uh, message that was like so close to what's actually going on in my life. Matter of fact, I usually get like, you know, how they have like the, the numbers. Um, these are your lucky numbers, which has never, as of yet, as of yet, helped me win a Powerball. <laughs> not even bingo. <laughs> Them lucky numbers are not lucky. So I'm like, okay, do we got to go all the way to Japan? Huh, Chastity? Do we got to go all the way to Japan? <laughs> <laughs> to Tokyo. <laughs> and then I'm like, I think so because the little bitty messages and the little bitty cookies was like, okay, they gave him like a whole scroll. Like, this is your fortune. A whole big old piece of paper. Like, okay, yeah. It was on the spot. <laughs> You're right. It was on the spot. But um, how do y'all feel about, okay, I know I hit on this earlier, but... I don't know why I feel some type of way about Nene. Like, how do y'all feel? And I love me some Nene. I love all these ladies. But as far as her again, going off on Tanya again, like, what is it? I mean, it's, it seems like she's treating her like an enemy. Like, okay, like I said, like the last three or four episodes, Nene has been digging her claws into Tanya, and it seems like for no reason. So, y'all let me know. Like, what do y'all think is the real deal here? Like, again, this is her friend. She brought her to the show. When she first brought her to the first, on the first episode, she was just a bragging. This is my friend. This is my girl. You know, she comes to the shop. I mean, it can't still be over them sunglasses, right? The sunglasses that Nene thought she was trying to, you know, shade her like they weren't as expensive as the rest of the stuff that she was wearing. You know, when her and uh, Marlo had to do the fashion show. It can't be because of them sunglasses, right? It just can't be. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. If she is, she is dragging it. Nene, you is dragging it, honey. You is dragging it. Like, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, when she told her that her relationship with Paul, basically she told her in so many words, um, your relationship with Paul might not last. So you bet not hold your breath. That's basically what she told her. And Tanya was like, you know, trying to explain to Nene, why you say that? You know, why would you say something like that? And you know what, Miss Hogg? I swear, I swear. I was thinking that too. Like, because Greg was going off of her. Um, and I think maybe, um, I think since Greg is going through this cancer and, you know, uh, trying to get rehabilitated and, you know, trying to be totally, you know, healed from the cancer and everything. Um, I think when Nene takes off sometimes, I think maybe it affects him. And maybe she don't see it in a way that he sees it. Like, okay, I'm doing better. I'm healthy. I'm able to, you know, take care of myself, feed myself, you know, all this woo 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 woo. So now you're bouncing. you just gone. Just going to leave me. I don't know if that's maybe how she's seeing it. Because he was going off. He was going off. Yes, Greg was being mean. Yelling at her on the phone. She was like, usually when we leave each other and go on trips. Or, you know, going to be away from each other. Is, you know, I love you. See you later. You know, have a safe fly. He was just like, rah, 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 just going off. She was like, what the hell? But... Why would she still go off on Tanya and not the other ladies? Hmm. I don't know. I thought that was really mean, though. Let me get a sip. I need something to drink. Mm. So dry. I thought that was really mean, though. Tanya was trying to... Tan I keep saying Tanya. Tanya... Um, she was trying to explain, you know, why would you say something like that? That's really mean. Why would you wish wish me to be with somebody else? And Nene just went ham. She was like, I don't give a damn. Oops, hold up. 
She said, I don't give a F <laughs> about your relationship. I don't care. I don't care <laughs> about your relationship. And the way she was looking like, if looks could kill. I don't know. I don't know, Nene. I, I don't know. I'm going to need some answers. I'm going to need some answers. And then you saw the previews to the next episode. Tanya was on the bus crying. Like, she had her shades on, but you could tell she was crying. Um, Nene had uh, jumped into a bus or a cab and took off and left the ladies. And, you know, she was in there, Tanya, dabbing under her eyes. You could tell she was crying. And... Uh, <sighs> I don't know. You said she needs mental counseling to deal with his medical. That could be. That could be. Because cancer takes a toll on you. I mean, like I said in my last episode, how Greg be uh Greg be snapping at her when she be trying her best to help him and help him stay positive. Um, my mom, you know, she had cancer and she had colon, just like, you know, what Greg is going through. And it, it's really hard trying to be a caregiver. And most of y'all know, I said it before, I got my shirt on now. I just got off of work. I work in a nursing home uh, part-time. It is hard sometimes trying to be a caregiver because the people going through the cancer, they don't always feel like you really understand or like you really get what they're going through. You know? So... It can be sometimes even as hard on the caregiver as it is on the patient. But still, that don't give her no right to go off on that girl like that. She went hell. She's like, I don't give a damn about your man. <laughs> Nene, boy, when she get mad, I'll be like, let me, I, let me find the quickest exit <laughs> to get out of here. But you know what? Tanya, she better, and that's when I said, okay, Chastity, she was laughing at me earlier, but when I said Tanya, her, and Tanya, me, two totally different people, because I would have been like, bitch, see, now, see, this where you, this where, okay, it's like this, when you, when, okay, if you have a parent who's, who's, uh, passed on, like I have, and like a lot of people, you can't go to somebody and say your mama. Because as soon as they say your mama, they don't want to fight you. Like, I would want to fight you. You talking about my mama? You What? What? And she ain't here to defend herself? Okay, it's kind of the same situation. Greg is sick. Greg is going through cancer and all this. But you talk about her man? She can't just say F your man either. You know what I'm saying? So I think what Nene going there on her guy like that, that, that was wrong. That was wrong. Because as soon as she would have said, I don't give a damn about Greg either. Oh, Nene would have probably got up from that table, threw her little lap napkin to the side. Um, You know? <laughs> and been ready to bang. You already know. You already know. Yep, yep, she's doing to Tanya what Greg is doing to her. Mm -hmm. But Tanya better stand up for herself. She better. Shoot, I'll be like, hold up, you know what? Let's see. If I'm going to stay here and get this check from this reality show, I'm going to get this check, but I'm going to check you while I'm getting this check. I'm not going to be your carpet. You ain't going to walk all over me. But I don't know. I don't know. Tanya, she's... Mm -hmm. I don't know. She reminds me of kind of like when Portia first got on the show. Like everybody used to go in on Portia. They used to talk about her, tease her, call her dumb, call her stupid, you know, stuff like that. It kind of brings me back to when Portia, you know, when she used to be real naive and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, she got it in her. She just needs to, I don't know what it's going to take. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to take. And both of them big old women, they both like six, two, six, three. Shoot, they, they about, they match for match. They, they about match for match. But, you know, size don't mean nothing. <laughs> size don't mean, if you got a good heel, take them uh, heels off. 
But no, I don't condone violence. I don't condone violence. I condone self defense. I condone getting a mm -mm off of you. <laughs> That's what I condone. But y'all, let me know what y'all think about. Um, for those of y'all who might be coming in late, make sure y'all hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about the show. Um, make sure you keep uh, Eva and her family and y'all prayers. Um, her grandpa, you know, had a heart attack. And like I said, I don't know if he's still alive now. You know, it's months later after the show was taped. So we don't know. But um, keep her in your prayers. And also, you know, let me know what you feel again about this Tanya and Nene situation. Like, I don't know. I don't get it. I do not get it. But anyway, um, you said you wouldn't want a friend like Nene too much to deal with. It, it's a lot of work. It's That's like a full-time job plus a part-time job plus a hustle on the side. That's a lot of work, honey. <laughs> that's a lot of work to deal with Nene. But Nene, one thing about her, when she loves, she loves hard. Um... It normally, normally she treat her friends really well. So that's why I don't understand like how she go from putting Tanya up on this, she's all this and all that when we first met her. And ever since then, almost every episode, she's, she's talking about her. If it ain't her hair, it's what she's wearing. It's the way she talk. It now is her man. Mm, I'm like candy. <laughs> I got my lips turned up and my the side eye. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anywho, y'all, I'm about to get off this live. I uh, thank y'all all for tuning in tonight. Um, how many of y'all been watching? Uh. Loving Hip Hop Miami, because somebody been on me to do a review on that show. I haven't did a review on that show since last season, because I just ain't got into this season yet, because last season was like, mm, you know, but somebody told me the season was really good so far. What y'all think? Is it worth me doing a review? <laughs> No, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check it out, though. For real. I'm going to check it out. But, um, anywho, uh, I don't even know when it comes on. I'm going to have to check it out. I'm going to have to watch probably, like, the last two episodes and, you know, take my little notes and come at y'all, you know, with a live review. But I'm going I'm to I'm I'm get on that. I'm going to get on that. But, anyway, you guys, you have a wonderful night. And, again, if y'all dealing with what we dealing with, inclement weather, really, really cold, harsh conditions, like... The kids been out of school for like four days. <laughs> That's how bad it is here. So y'all, if y'all, you know, dealing with what we're dealing with, stay warm, stay safe, dry safely, leave ahead of time, give yourself enough chance to get to work or wherever you're going safely, stay warm, stay dry. And in the meantime and in between time, prime time squad, as usual, stay safe, be blessed. I'm out. Oh, you get ice tomorrow, Miss Hall? Honey, be safe. I work from home tomorrow, so I'm going to be at home on the computer processing disability claims for my man gig. So I'm going to be at home tomorrow. But for all of y'all out there, again, be safe. Drive very, very carefully if you have an inclement weather. And goodbye, y'all on Instagram. Thanks for checking in, Romy Roll. Toodles. Thank you, Chastity.